Hey guys, welcome to the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. This is your host, Billy Brown Bathestone, and I'm his assistant, Adelina. Today, we are having another episode of our Deep Dive series. Today, looking at Summon Greater Demon. Yeah, so Summon Greater Demon is one of my favorite spells. It's one of the most powerful spells in the game, but it is also one of the more imposing spells in the game because it is very difficult to understand and it requires a lot of knowledge to be able to leverage it properly. So I am very excited to do this episode. I've been preparing for it for a while, but before we begin, I do want to mention that I really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much for watching and helping to grow the channel. That said, let's take a look. Summon Greater Demon. Note, we will be taking separate deep dives into Summon Lesser Demons, Infernal Calling, and planar binding and other videos. Yes, so this is going to already be a pretty long video, and while there is a lot of synergy between Summon Greater Demon and these other spells, in particular Infernal Calling and planar binding, I'm going to reserve discussing those particular issues for another video. So to begin to in general terms, demons tend to be inferior melee combatants relative to devils or elementals, they are glass cannons, so to speak, but they do tend to have powerful magical abilities or innate spells that make them very powerful in casting, and they lack some of the issues that the other spells have to deal with. Do be aware, summoning demons may create alignment issues or campaign issues. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I remember when alignment used to mean something. And some DMs may think that, hey, someone who regularly summons demons, uh, that's evil. And you may have alignment issues. You might also have issues with the other player characters who may consider you evil for summoning demons. Uh, this is true in my own campaign. If I were to uh, animate dead or summon demons or anything like that, uh, my party members would have a real serious problem with it. So, something to keep in mind, that's going to vary from table to table. Looking at the spell itself, we can see that it is a combat cast of one action, unlike Conjure Elemental, so that's good. I tend to demand combat casting out of my summoning spells. The material component has no gold piece value, so you can cast it with an arcane focus. However, the material component is necessary to create the protective circle, so be aware that if you choose to use an arcane focus, you may not be able to create that protective circle. That said, it's a pretty horrific material component, so uh, I personally have no problem casting it without. The spell does require sight to cast and to place the demon, but once the demon is down, you no longer need to retain line of sight. The caster does get to choose the demon type. At level four, it's challenge rating five or below, and you get a plus one challenge rating for each upcast level. This is different from Summon Lesser Demons and Conjure Minor Elementals, where you don't get to choose the type. Now, if your concentration is ended while the demon is controlled, the spell immediately ends. Again, unlike Conjure Elemental. Now, the demon has a separate initiative, so the caster is going to have to manage and coordinate that. Do check with the DM, though. He may rule that they act on your initiative just to simplify gameplay and uh, he'll appreciate you touching base with him to see how he wants to handle it. Now, the caster can issue a verbal command as a free action, which the demon carries out on its next turn. So here we have to point out that most demons only speak abyssal. And while they all tend to have telepathy, it does require their action to initiate it, so you can't talk to them via their telepathy, and if you don't speak abyssal, they will not be able to understand your verbal commands. So make sure that you learn Abyssal in character creation. You aren't going to want to invest a fee to pick it up. And talk to your DM about it. Some DMs may relax this Abyssal requirement. Uh, as rules as written, it is not specified. So that will work to your advantage if you don't need to know Abyssal. To be honest, my DM surprised me with this. On the one hand, he says, oh, you can't use Summon Greater Demon because it would cause all of these campaign issues. And then, of course, you know, your party members are going to have a problem with it. But, of course, if you do cast it, you don't need to speak Abyssal. I was like, okay, great, thanks. <laughs> uh, 
If you don't speak Abyssal and the DM does require you to speak it, there are only a few demons available uh, and not the very, very best ones. So you really do need to add Abyssal if you're going to be casting Summon Greater Demon with any effectiveness. Now, without the command, they will not act except to attack creatures that have attacked it. So that might come into play and they will not attempt to subvert your orders like devils will. That's one thing I like about Summon Greater Demons. They're not devious. They're just chaos machines, and they don't really differentiate between uh, demons or non-demons. Uh, you know, they all look the same to them, whereas devils are pretty devious and, you know, dislike being controlled and will try to subvert orders, and you have to phrase everything very carefully, and it's very annoying. So the demon will roll a charisma save at the end of every turn to break your control. Note that the way that the action economy works, that you can always get one action out of the demon and then immediately drop concentration before it makes that roll. That means it will then disappear and you can get one action guaranteed out of that demon. And it can be a powerful one, something like a power word stun or a dimension door or a dispel magic. So that's good to keep in mind, although most of the time you're going to want to try and keep them around. Now some demons do have magic resistance, which is going to apply to the charisma save. This is different from infernal calling, which is an ability check, so the magic resistance is irrelevant. The demon does have disadvantage on the save if the caster says its true name. So a strong strategy is to command it to tell you its true name and then say it. Now, do note, sometimes you don't want to burnish its ability or, or your ability to keep it under control. Sometimes you want it to break control because that frees up your concentration and you're happy with a D6 worth of its existence because most battles only last like five or six rounds. But if you are trying to keep control, you might want to know its name. However, check with the DM regarding the action progression because it is a free action to command it but how is speech treated in your campaign? Can you command it to both attack and give its true name in the same turn? Uh, if not, then you may need to command it on the first turn to give you its true name, and then it's not going to attack. Uh, so work that out with your DM. You know, it might take a, a round or two before you can get it fully online. This dynamic combos well with abilities that force rerolls, for example, chronal shift, or imposes penalties, for example, bane. Note that portent is not all that great with it because portent must be applied before the roll, and you know demons are not going to make their charisma saves too often, so you're going to want to have an ability that you can apply after the roll. It also combos well with charm monster. We can't forget that, and so as we go over the demons later, I will be calling out their wisdom saves, just because some of them might be hard to control because of the charisma save, but if you can get a charm monster on them, they can still be very effective summons for you. Do note that an exceptionally high save DC can break this spell. If you can get your save DC to 20 or 21, that means there are high quality demons that you can now summon that cannot make their save. And this did not used to be an issue, but now that the new Tasha's items are in the game, that was literally the first thing I thought when I saw those. I was like, oh my god, they just broke Summon Greater Demon. And by which I mean broke, I mean they made it really, really powerful. Because if you can get that save DC up high enough, man, to be able to summon some of these things and reliably get them for the full one hour duration, that is just so powerful. Now, if the demon does break control, it's not the end of the world. It's very restricted in what it does, rules as written. It will attack the nearest non-demonic creatures. This is different from Infernal Calling, where the devil is, you know, upset with you and is, uh, you know, free to attack you even if you're not closest to it. This is easily mitigated with strong environmental placement. You sick the demon on the other side of the room, between you and the monsters, uh, close to the big bad, and it's going to be fine. Even if you uh, lose control, it's just going to be messing up everything that's close to it, and that's what you want. If it does kill everything in the room, 
Keep in mind that these are glass cannons, and that's going to work to your party advantage because by the time they finish, you know, wiping out all of your enemies, there's not going to be uh, much left, and your party can wipe them out pretty easily. Now, if the demon breaks control, it disappears 1d6 rounds after concentration ends. So again, this can be desirable and can be specifically pursued to free up your concentration because even 1d6 rounds of a persistent effect like a demon on the field can have a powerful impact. And this strategy is viable even if you don't have a very high save DC. Final thing to note about the spell is that you can use the blood material component to create a protective circle. And this is pretty cool if you have the component or not using an arcane focus. Demons can't cross or harm the circle, and they cannot target anyone within it. Do note that this does exclude area of effects, uh, you know, abilities like the Chasmy Drone or the Vrock Screech. And do note that the circle is just big enough for your space and it is immobile. So those are the general things that we should be aware of about Summon Greater Demon. And we see that despite its complexity and despite the complications of its use, it is still very useful, either in terms of getting a summon that will stick around a while because you can control it very well, or even a demon that is very powerful that you cannot control, but is just going to wreck everything that's close to it, and you can manage uh, you know, how many enemies are left versus uh, how many hit points the demon has left. Finally, we will look at the available demons that we can summon with this spell, because you can get some really good ones. Starting with the... Babau, a challenge rating four demon. He's bloody and slimy and I don't like it. Yeah, he's a pretty ugly one, right? But one of my favorite summons, just challenge rating four, but while a mediocre combatant, it has some fantastic special abilities. Specifically, that Dispel Magic at Will and Darkness at Will is really amazing. I mean, to use a 4th level spell to get a platform that can pump out 3rd level Dispel Magics at Will, that is very impressive. Plus, it's relatively easy to control because it lacks magic resistance, so this is a really nice option for casting the spell at 4th level. And what is the next form available for our spell, Elena? A Dibok, a challenge rating 4 demon. He kind of looks like a wannabe zombie. Yeah, that's not actually the Dibok. He possesses, like, dead bodies, and then they become, like, these zombie things. And that is a really cool ability. So not only can this thing Dimension Door at will, it has this really fantastic possession ability that allows it to possess really strong melee combatants. You can gain intel with the possession ability because it knows everything that the corpse knows or knew uh, and it speaks common so this is one of the few forms that you can summon if you don't speak abyssal so the problem with the dibic is that that it is hard to control but even for a couple of rounds that dimension door at will can be really powerful and the possession thing can be very cool what do we have next shadow demon a challenge rating for demon. I mean, he looks normal. Well, uh, he is made of shadows. He's got some, uh, you know, interesting stealth abilities. Uh, difficult to control with that plus four charisma save. Uh, but, you know, can be a good scout or spy. And it is, uh, you know, got a decent fly. Or at least it can fly. So I'm not that impressed with the shadow demon. Uh, I give it a rating of average. What do we have next? A Balgura, a challenge rating five demon. He's like King Kong, but neon brighter. Yeah, he's a large demon and a pretty decent combatant. Uh, got a few cool spells. Uh, I like Entangle, especially since that's not normally available to wizards. And, uh, you know, easy to control. Uh, minus one charisma save, no magic resistance. Uh, it has blind sight, which I like because I use a lot of obscurement. So this is one of my go-tos. If I just need a grunt to a pound away, uh, I can throw up my obscurement and throw out a Baralgura, and uh, it, it does all right. What do we have next? A Tanaruk. 
a challenge rating five demon. I mean, he also looks like a normal monster, human, whatever it is. Yeah, he's like an orc demon, so he looks just kind of like a hulked out orc. Really excellent combatant. You know, no real special abilities, but like a lot of good melee stuff. Probably the best demon at lower levels for, you know, straight up melee wreckage. So, you know, fairly okay to control. I give it a rating of good. And what do we have next? A Chasmy. A challenge rating six. Must cast at fifth level. It's like a big mosquito. Yeah, a giant mosquito with just a devastating proboscis attack. Now, you do have to upcast this, but I love the Chasmy. It has a great fly speed. That drone effect is very powerful versus minions. It has blind sight and that devastating proboscis attack. This thing is just like a pocket nuke that you can drop on the field. My favorite summon, I give it a rating of superior. What do we have next? A Vrock. A challenge rating six demon must cast at fifth level. It's like hawks or something from an anime I watched. Yeah, kind of like a vulture, uh, just that works out. <laughs> uh, again, you have to upcast it. It's okay. I mean, it's got good durability for a demon, and it's got a nice fly speed if you need that. The stun and the screech are excellent against minions, but it is hard to control. I mean, magic resistance and plus two charisma save is pretty tough, so I would almost always go with the Chasmy over the Varrock here. An Armanite. A challenge rating 7 demon must cast at 6th level. It's like a centaur or centaur. How do you pronounce this? Centaur. Oh, centaur. Wait, I pronounce it wrong all the time. But yeah, centaur. Yeah, with just like a giant razor tail, huh? So this thing is a pretty strong combatant. Uh, it has magical attacks, good mobility, coughing out lightning bolts every now and then. I give this a good rating. What do we have next? A draglot. A challenge rating 7 demon must cast at 6th level. It's like a werewolf, but without the tail and ears. Wait, does it have ears? Yeah, well this is like a werewolf drow, and this is a really easy one to control. I mean, it's got plus zero charisma saves and no magic resistance. So this is a really reliable one that you can throw out. I do think it's a little bit underpowered relative to an Armanite, but the fact that you can control it so well uh, makes it also a rating of good for me. What do we have next? A Marzi. A challenge rating 7 demon. Must cast at 6th level. It looks like the first one. What was the first one? Whatever it was, it's ugly, just like the first one. Yeah, so the Marizi is just not a great summon, especially since you have to cast it as a 6th level spell. It's hard to control, got niche special abilities, I mean, it does speak Elvish, and I guess if you're a necromancer and you use or control ghouls or gas, that special ability can be nice, but otherwise, there are definitely better ones to summon. What do we have next? Hezru, a challenge rating 8 demon, must cast at 7th level. Oh, it's like that big toad from Naruto, but evil and spiky and... Yeah, bronze. he's... yeah, I can see it. Pretty ugly, but... Uh, Pretty solid combatant, you know, really nice hit points for a demon. Not too much in terms of the special abilities, the stench is solid. But, uh, you know, it's okay. For a 7th level spell though, uh, I'm, I'm not super impressed. What do we have next? A Shuzuba. A challenge rating 8 demon must cast at 7th level. Oh, it's like a wolf, but with a dragon tail spiky thing. Yeah, the Shisuba is an interesting one. I mean, it's got no magic resistance and a minus one charisma save, so very easy to control. And it's a pretty solid combatant. That stinger is pretty good, so I give this a rating of good. What do we have next? A Glabrazu. A challenge rating nine demon must cast at eighth level. It's like a crab, but then a mix of Sonic because of the arms, but then... <laughs> <laughs> and then... Just a dragon at the top. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, these demons are all just like a bunch of animals tossed together with a bunch of magic powers. Uh, this one is an amazing combatant. It has amazing special abilities. Now, it is super hard to control. I mean, magic resistance and plus seven on its saves. 
you're not going to have control of this thing for very long, but you don't need to because it can cast Power Word Stun, and Power Word Stun is also an 8 level spell. So you can summon this, get it to do its Power Word Stun right away, and then you still have a Glabrizu on the field. Even if they're uncontrolled, they can be useful, and it might not break your control on the first round. I mean, it, the dice might work in your favor. And this to have Dispel Magic at will, Darkness at will to go with True Sight, I mean, man, a Glabrizu, even cast at 8th level, this thing is going to have a really solid impact on the field. I give it a rating of superior. What do we have next? Master of Cruelties, a challenge rating 9 demon, must cast at 8th level. It looks like the Shadow Demon, but without the shadows. Yeah, and then just ones. like plate armor. It's a, a pretty impressive one. You do have to cast it at 8th level, so you have to compare it to the Glabrizu. And it doesn't have Power Word Stun, but it's got a lot of really nice abilities. I mean, True Sight speaks common, so available if you don't uh, know Abyssal. So uh, I can see casting this, and I like the Master of Cruelties. I give it a rating of Superior. We have one final one. The Yachlal. A CR or Challenge Rating 10 Demon. Must cast at 9th level. I can see the lol. It's just like a messed up experiment on a tree that was supposed to entertain <laughs> kids but turned out as a monster yeah that one is definitely <laughs> kind of out of left field it doesn't look really imposing or hulk like like the other ones did but it is pretty powerful it's tough to control plus six on it saves and magic resistance uh, i mean it's got an interesting array of abilities i mean that mist form is good and it does speak elvish but as a ninth level spell i, I mean come on this doesn't hold up uh, as uh, a ninth level summon so I give it a rating of poor. Well, we're done. That was our analysis of Summon Greater Demons. If you agree or disagree, tell us in the comments. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. This was your host, Bill Braun Bafflestone, and I'm his assistant, Adelina. See you next time.